The purpose of this segment is to gain a basic understanding of the importance and purpose of pre-incident planning. We will give you the basics on how to develop a thorough pre-incident plan of a target occupancy in your community. Specifically, we will focus on the following objectives. The value of a pre-incident plan to firefighters at all ranks. National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, 1620 recommended practice for pre-incident planning types and uses of pre-incident plans, steps for conducting pre-incident plans, and National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, firefighter fatality cases, both reported and pending. Let's review the definition of a pre-incident plan as defined by NFPA. It is a systematic method of gathering and recording facts for the purpose of problem identification, analysis, and information retrieval when needed during an emergency. There are several reasons why pre-incident planning is so important, but the most important is the value to line firefighters and officers. To get started on a plan within your community, you should identify the following issues. Identify target hazards within your community in order to prioritize your work. These could be high occupancy risks, such as nursing homes and hospitals, high-rise buildings, construction challenges, or places with high-risk chemicals. Also understand the value of pre-incident planning for residential properties. For example, there is great value to firefighters in knowing the construction type and layout of homes built with lightweight wood construction. You should also be able to recognize problem areas that would normally require built-in systems in order to reduce risks to life and property. Knowledge of fire sprinkler systems, early warning detection systems, such as smoke alarms, and compartmentalization to contain fires, including fire and or smoke doors, is important to all firefighters. Another pre-incident planning issue for you to consider is your own fire department's limitations based upon staffing and resources available. Every fire department is restricted by its human and equipment resources. Pre-incident planning helps to identify individual capabilities respective to the challenges in the community. Keep in mind that you must be able to access the right information in the pre-incident plan at the right time during an incident. Periodic reviews are important so information can be accessed in a timely fashion to accelerate the speed of decision making. All these steps help to reduce the guesswork based on lack of or poor information. The definition from National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, 1620, recommended practice for pre-incident planning is a recommended practice which addresses the protection, construction, and operational features of specific occupancies to develop pre-incident plans for use by responders to manage fires and other emergencies using available resources. Pre-incident planning involves evaluating the protection systems, building construction, contents, and operating procedures that can impact emergency operations. There are several types of pre-incident plans that will help firefighters. They are a floor plan. This includes the layout of each floor, location of fire protection systems and alarm panels, and the location of utility and or maintenance rooms specifically gas, electric, and water shutoffs. Another type of plan is a plot plan. This is a drawing that displays an outline of the building and its surrounding areas. This would include accessible and inaccessible areas for fire equipment, roads and buildings that are potential exposures or those that limit access, and obstacles such as overhead power lines. A plot plan would also look at apparatus placement considerations as well as water sources. Steps for conducting a pre-incident plan include Contact the owner or occupant to make the initial appointment. State your purpose as information gathering, which is helpful in the event of an emergency. As you approach the building, make note of the exposures and exterior issues. Be sure to consider hydrants and available water supply. Make note of road access to site and the various possible approaches. Observe the exterior of the building and record the construction type and dimensions. The location of the fire department connection 
FDC, if present, must be observed. Also, the means of egress-ingress for the occupants and firefighters are all important to note. Interview owner, manager, and or occupants. Explain the purpose of your visit. Obtain the nature of occupancy or business, contact information, and hours of operation. Look at the roof for any special challenges. Confirm the roof construction with special note of the support system. Identify any exposure problems from the roof vantage point. Observe potential methods of ventilation, such as skylights or other natural openings. Now conduct your interior inspection. On each floor, sketch all pertinent findings, including utilities, exits, fire protection control locations, and equipment access. If there is an attic area, note its construction type. List the primary life hazard times of occupancy, as well as the type of occupants and any special needs. Highlight if there are any unusual types of fire loads or hazardous materials issues based upon the chemical or volume. Significant storage locations are to be listed. Also, identify if the structure has a suppression or an alarm system. To conclude this segment, remember to review all information and research any information that may be unfamiliar to you or other firefighters. This should occur with all personnel and on a regular basis. Estimate and discuss potential fire problems. Determine possible strategies and tactics. Organize information into a usable form, either electronically or by hard copy, whichever is possible and easily retrievable. Update and maintain files as often as necessary. Keep information available for use at emergencies through a pre-incident plan book, onboard computers, and dispatch centers.